the feel-good story of the year. NBA players providing soup for needy superstars. And the burning cross, does it mean wrestling is going straight to hell? A wicked show today with the big Valbowski. Also, an OTR fave, Beverly Mahood, and the Catwoman of stock car racing, Cat Teasdale. What a show on Off the Record. Michael Landsberg, brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. Scheduling, it's tough for the show. We try to get you the best guests. If you're tuning in to see Tim Johnson, the Blue Jays manager, who we said would come on and answer all questions, he postponed us from Monday to Tuesday, then back for Wednesday, back to Tuesday. Because of his schedule, he has declined the show today, but he said that he'll be on the show next week, so we hope to hold him to that and hope to have Tim Johnson for you next week, but no apologies as for this show. This may be an off-the-record classic. She is one of our favorite guests of all time. She is one of the hottest country singers in this country. She is going to be a mega superstar in North America, and Beverly Mahood is promoting the Huron Carroll Tour. Uh, all proceeds going to the food bank. You're in Hamilton tonight, right? Hamilton tonight. Everybody's got to come out. They they turn a dollar into twenty dollars. And we will talk Amazing. about that uh, later on in the show. Well, he is a superstar star now in the WWF. He is one of the rising stars. He's wrestled all around the world, but he's Vince's guy right now from Markham, Ontario. Val Venus, good to see you. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. And he'll be talking in a way that you haven't seen him talk, and that is straight, because he's a smart guy and lots to say about sports. And uh, a big name in auto racing in this country. She was a Cascar Rookie of the Year in 1993. She has raced Formula Atlantic, Indy Lights, Cat Teasdale, now NASCAR driver. Great to see you, too, as well. Thank you. It's great to be here. Great to see everybody, because we got a lot to talk about. Today, the end zone celebration. What happens when it turns into child's play? Pat Ewing says NBA players will hold a fundraising game. Do we have a problem with some of the funds going to needy point guards? And where's the good taste line in wrestling? And was it crossed last night on Raw? But first of all, Roger Clements, hottest topic in this country, maybe on the continent. He says that the Blue Jays won't spend the money that they need to spend to bring a World Series winner to what was his team. So he wants to be traded. He'll get that trade. But the question I ask you is you watch maybe the greatest pitcher of the modern era of baseball or the last 30 years. Have you lost respect for Roger Clemens because of his trade demand? Absolutely not. I mean, you got to think Roger Clemens is a businessman. He wants the Blue Jays to be on top. And if he sees that the management is not putting forth the work required to put the Blue Jays on top, then why should he stay? He wants to be on a winning team. Everybody wants to be on a winning team. He's giving it his best. Shouldn't everybody else? Yeah, but you know, at the same point in time, what's going to end up happening is that players are going to go around the globe looking at the, the bottom end of the corporations that are running these different teams and saying, you know, if, if they don't have X amount of dollars to put forth a top team, I'm not going to play, and then you're going to get one team that's all stacked. I so, think they call that the New York Yankees. Hey. What, what, more, what more can they do? What, what more can they give him? I mean, $8 million. Okay, how much more does he want? Also, I mean, they have to honor. They have to honor that he's asked, you know, for that. But, um, you know, he also makes a lot of points, and, and maybe he should be a general manager, not a player, you know. So are you, have you lost respect for him? You know, I, I haven't, because they have to honor. They have to honor that part that, you know, he wants to be traded. I think it's all about ego, though, and I think Roger Clements is saying I'm... Um, the greatest pitcher of this era, I should be pitching for a World Series winner. Yeah. I think it's all about ego. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with asking for something, and we all learned that when we were little kids, right? It's those who say yes? What, not necessarily true, um, but at the same point in time, I mean, the Toronto Blue Jays know how to make World Series champion teams. We've had them twice and kind of sort of almost three times with that season that didn't really finish, but um, whether or not we have to give every pitcher that comes in that's going to be the best in the world everything conceivable um, that he thinks he doesn't have to have a world championship team. How can you do that year upon year upon year? I mean, we've got a situation going on where, where everything down there is being sold out at flea market prices, trying to get the city to keep it going, so. Uh, okay, L let's talk about, though, um, what is acceptable ego? I mean, all of us are performers in our various fields, and you need to have an ego. You need to believe that you're pretty good at what you do. But how much is too much? Take a look at the past weekend and what's going on in the NFL, and I'm wondering where is the lawn line crossed as to what's acceptable? This is uh, Mathis giving a little bow here, but this is the one that I really like, I think. Is that cool? You guys okay with that? A little leapfrog for the New Orleans Saints in the end zone? I love it. I think it's great. Fun. What's wrong with that? Well, I wasn't saying there's anything wrong with it. I was just asking if it's okay. I think it's fantastic. You know, mm. I was, uh, when we were in Pittsburgh there, I was talking to um, Cordell, 
and I said, please, when you cross that end zone, give her the old big Valboski. <laughs> Unfortunately, Cordell hasn't gotten the end zone in a couple of weeks. Exactly. I'm still waiting, but uh, I think stuff like that's fantastic. I love it. It's great. It's fun. And, you know, the other thing, too, is that, you know, every person out there that's playing a sport at that level, I think sometimes they lose the whole aspect of it as still being a sport because of this big business stuff everyone keeps talking about with all the money. Sure, and to right. be able to go out there and have fun, a little bit of leapfrogging like we used to do when we were little, I mean, What's that brings back that? the play yeah. of it. Yeah, and, and a bit know. of that is yeah. you're, you're, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, a bit of it is you're excited. You know, a anything you do, you sometimes, you know, when you get excited, you know, sometimes your emotions go. You know? So it's all sort of a matter of, you know what, it is a game and they're there to entertain. Mm -hmm. Let's roll the next video. Uh, Dwayne Rudd plays for the Minnesota Vikings. This is what he did as he returned a fumble like 96 yards. As he's getting to the end zone, hey, it's all good, clean fun, right? He's there, he's now gonna wave the opposition in, he's waiting at the one yard line, and he's saying, come get me, and then he spikes the ball at his feet. That's just good, clean fun too, right? Well, they're sometimes stubbing your nose at people, but, I mean, you have to go on and win. And in, in, in corporate, you know, uh, world, if you're going to be the winner at it, I don't think people in the boardroom sit there and apologize for spiking their bottom line and, and, and making incredible profits at the end of the day. So, uh, again, I'm sure that the winning team, the people up in the grandstands, thought this was pretty awesome that he was spiking the ball, right? Sure they did. Still cool? I think when you return that kind of yardage and you make it all the way to the end zone and you're just there, I mean, just imagine yourself there. I mean, just imagine, just for one second, just imagine you're there and all you see is the opposition coming running towards you. Come on, baby. Come on, bring it on. <laughs> just imagine just one there. word. Just imagine one word. Sportsmanship? Adrenaline mm -hmm. is another word. So it outweighs adrenaline. that. Yeah. So because you have this adrenaline rush, you can act like a boor and a pig because it's okay. I don't think he's acting like a oh, boor and a pig. Oh, come on. I mean, those I, other guys are working their butt off. They're chasing him down the field. He turns around. He's doing a little bit of this. I think that's kind of rude. One question for you. Yeah. How many yeah, fans talking. didn't love it? No. The fans, fans of that probably team probably loved, loved it. it, yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay. I mean, he's playing for that team. Give the fans of that team exactly what they want. All right, we'll take a break, and this is the kind of show it's going to be. Great opinion from these three. We'll go to break, and we will tell you that uh, up next, Patrick Ewing, kind of getting crucified in the media. We'll talk about crucifixions later on as well. It's easy to blame the players, but should we? Up next on Off the Record. Hello, ladies. The big Belbowski here, and I'm on the set of... Yeah, yeah. You can catch John. Monday to Friday, right here on TSN. Don't ever miss him. I never do. <laughs> NBA players have announced that they'll play an exhibition game to try to raise money for charity in Atlantic City on the 19th of December. Tickets, $25 to $1,000. Some of the proceeds will go to charity and some will go to NBA players who need cash. Now, you may laugh at that, but Patrick Ewing, who heads the union, said some of our colleagues mismanage their money and make bad decisions. Our objective is to help out these people. Sounds fair, right? Not fair at all. No? No. Now, when you've been on tour for the past month, raising money for people that are homeless and uh, you need to use the food banks, you know, one out of ten Canadians, they use the food banks. Forty percent are children. I mean, what? What What do they mismanage their money? They spend too much money on caviar or, you know, what, they got a, you know, $2,000, you know, a month of, you know, rent or something, you know? It's like, try living on the other end. It's not our fault that they, you know, go to the extremes on spending. No sympathy for Beverly, from Beverly Mahood? No. <laughs> Anybody going to sympathize no. with... I despise unions. I just despise all unions, not just support unions, but all unions. And, uh, as far as putting together this exhibition game, I mean, it's just a joke. Why? It's because... These guys should be doing exactly what everybody else has to do, and that's working for their money. I mean, I don't care if it's Why do you know, you training during the unions? day. Why do you despise all sports unions? Would you like to send NHL players back to the days when um, the owners made 90% of the money and the players took 10? What's wrong with that? What is wrong? Honestly, what is wrong with that? If I own a team, I'm investing my money in this team. I'm the one taking the risk, not the players. I'm the one taking the risk with my money, my time. If I, if I deserve most of that money that comes back in profits. I don't see anything wrong with that. You're looking at a very hardcore conservative here. Now, the WWF is not unionized, right? No. If it was unionized, would you quit? I wouldn't say I'd quit, but I would to be totally against the union, completely. All right, well, you know, if I was in the WWF, I'd hope for a union because I'd say, hey, you know what, I'd probably end up making more money. And I'd, if, if I'm out there, I mean, you guys perform harder than anyone. 200, 250 dates a year, right? 
you deserve, I think, in a lot of cases, more money than you make. Our sources tell us, this is the kind of the money, hold on, that WWF performers are making. The Rock's the hottest guy out there right now, makes, our sources tell us, between $750,000 and a million dollars a year. I think he's underpaid. Edge, great young wrestler, signed a rookie contract, making about $25,000. Stone Cold, between two and three million dollars. I think these guys are underpaid. I think you need a union. You know, I think as far as Vincent Mann goes, you take a look at Vincent Mann's daily schedule. He works harder than almost anybody in the World Wrestling Federation. And we work very hard. We work extremely hard for our money. And it's hard to believe that somebody like Vincent Mann works almost five times that amount. I mean, it's, it's incredible. You just look at the guy. He's, he gets to bed 2, 3 in the morning. He's up 6, 7 in the morning in the gym training, then he's back in the office. He's just nonstop, go, 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 all day long. Is anyone here going to defend the union and the sure. right for athletes, regardless 100%. of their sport, to take a bigger piece of the pie, A hundred percent. It's very simple. If people will go and pay the twenty-five to $1,000 per ticket to sit there and watch that game, and you all know that they will, then they have, I guess, the right, and the inherent right is what entertainment no, is saying. That's completely wrong. But no, it's not, and I'll tell you why. Because at some point in time, someone took wrestling, and I told you earlier, when we were, just before we started the show, that my dad sent my sister and I and my mom down to see the first Hulkamania ever. And, and we paid good money to go see that. And at some point in time, wrestling was just something that they did. It wasn't the big show and the big production. At some point in time, everyone wants that little piece of the pot, and all of a sudden there's money that is involved. As for the union taking care of their own, what is so bad with the union taking care of their own? You know, you would think your own all. corporations would take care of their own if their people are suffering, right? A Why can't they take care of their own? A union in a business is basically a socialist program, and no part of socialism has, has ever worked anywhere on the, on the face of this planet, anywhere. And you, you don't think you don't think that um, the homeless people that Beverly Mahood is talking about, who have the ability to go get health care, who have the ability to go be treated in a hospital, that that's not socialism working? That's socialism being used to the point where. We won't have it in 20 years. We can't afford it. I mean, the deficit goes up and up and up and up every single year. How much longer can we, can we afford to borrow money? You can't. You can't keep doing that. Yeah, it's fine and dandy right now. We won't have it in 20 years. What happens yeah, but in 20 how years? We, it's how we take care of, of the actual we, procurement of those we funds. Will, we will not be able to take care of those funds. We can't do it today. We can't even afford to pay the interest, let alone the principal and the money we borrow. But we can't, we can't shut things down. At the same point in time, I guess, I guess that the populace is saying we don't want to shut down basketball, and if... Bob needs some help. Maybe they'll help Bob. Okay, well, let's talk. Let's bring this into the sports world. Should the government be lending assistance? Last week we heard from Dennis Mills that he believed the government should provide sports teams with tax breaks, athletes with tax breaks to try to entice athletes and teams to stay in Canada. Any problem with that? It's business. And if the business of entertaining is a business, and we say that it is because we make them pay taxes as well, there may be opportunities for them to procure incentives. Uh, there may be a necessity if we want to see those teams to be able to have that. Um, if, if someone says, well, this is just horrible, uh, we should never have that type of thing, um, I th suggest that they look at a number of American teams at some point in time when they had to go because no one was down there guarding the interests of those places and then they'd have to spend years trying to get them back. Um, should we have an open blanket policy that this is just what we give them carte blanche, no taxes? Of course not, and that's absolutely ridiculous. They should. I think they should be treated like you know nor normal people. I mean, why should they get breaks? You know what I mean? They make more money than most Canadians. But we'll lose them though. You have to believe that pro sports will head south, and, and maybe it Definitely should happen. If we can't afford it, maybe we shouldn't have it. Then you know what? We'll lose them. I mean, if we can't afford it, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like just treat them like normal people. Speaking well, for the right, why are we giving Valvinas. them so much? You know? the, the government has no right to impose these taxes that are going to send a free enterprise, being the franchise of sports, down south. They have no right getting their nose involved in that type of business where they're going to send jobs from this country south. No right doing that whatsoever. Isn't that the governing business, though? Isn't that their job to tax us and then make the best use of the funds that we, the people, tell them to make use? Isn't that their job, though? It is, but it shouldn't be abused. And right now, I mean, such as income tax, for instance, I mean, income tax should be completely abolished in this country, completely. Government has no right knowing how much you make in a free country. <laughs> it's true. In a free country, the government has no right knowing how much you make. That's your business, nobody else's business whatsoever. First thing we need to know, though, is how to get the Don Valley Parkway to move faster before we worry about <laughs> abolishing income tax. We're not going to get rid of income tax. Yeah. It's surprising. The, drivers, you know? the NASCAR driver wants to drive faster. Okay. Oh, you get the chance at least to do it once a week. We never get that chance. We will take a break. And as we go to break, we'll tell you that uh, we'll talk some wrestling up next on Off the Record. Uh, Vince says it's all fair in the wrestling wars. We ask our panel, 
is everything fair? Stay with us. I pissed you off, didn't I, there in the commercial break? All right, let's go back to uh, WWF, a staple for TSN, uh, one of the highest rated shows Raw is. And I think, in a lot of ways, they really reflect what's true entertainment in uh, television and in sports. But there's a line that most of us feel should exist on primetime television. And the question I want to ask the three of you is, has that line been crossed? And I'll show you some examples. This was the burning of the so-called cross from Undertaker. This was last night. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin apparently was going to be raised in mock, mock crucifixion, but we never saw that uh, on television, so we can't comment on it. But I want to ask you some other questions. I mean, the, the three of you, let's just throw it out generally. Um, is there a line that shouldn't be crossed? Mr. Wrestler person. Yeah, is, is that, that entertainment? Person. Do you find that entertaining? Is that part of the show or? Oh, it's definitely entertaining. I mean, yeah. you can't deny that. I mean, yeah. that's that's entertaining. As far as it crossing is it over the, the top? line, it's over the top. I'd say if it's not over the top, it's very very close to the edge. It's it's very it's way it's way edge. over the top. I mean, How you, know, do you, you don't have to do that stuff. I mean, just just well, wrestle. I mean, I mean you can why do you have and, to have that big act? You can sit there and the tell cross. me that you don't have to do that stuff. However, does everybody? I mean, does everybody in the crowd like that? Is is that a big thing? Burning the cross. Or who is that for? Is that for the player? Is that for the wrestler? That was for the wrestler that was inside the ring. But that's for, I mean, yeah. it's all for the fans. Yeah, I mean, what nice. you guys want has nothing to do with it, right? Exactly. I mean, it's exactly. all for the fans. You know what, fans. there's kids out there, so what are, what are the kids going to say? Why are they burning that cross? Well, I can, I can tell you this one thing right now. The kids if you brought over, If you brought Japanese-style wrestling here to Canada, it's extremely athletic. I mean, it's some of the most athletic professional wrestling in the world, Japanese style wrestling. But you bring it here to Canada and it won't get over with the, with the fans. The fans will just turn a blind eye to it because there is no entertainment to it. There is no storylines. You take a look at soap operas here in Canada and the United States. Is that going over the line? We were talking about wrestling. Well, now, it's now, supposed to be a, a sport. Here. We're yeah, not but, talking but about soap cheating operas on your and wife, acting. You know, women cheating on, on, on their husbands, men cheating on their wives in soap operas. Is that not over the line? Children are watching that. Well, hopefully they're not, because it's supposed to be on well, in the day, right? Hopefully, so they're, hopefully they're not. They are. They're not. It's a fact of life. Melrose Place. Yeah, but not you're intentionally that. presenting you, the burning of the cross where you know darn well there's going to be children. That's a difference where you're yeah, hoping. Yeah, but in the, the beginning of Melrose that. Place, there's you know a, a disclaimer on it. You know, you may right. not want your children. WWF has exactly. a disclaimer. Is, is there a disclaimer for Melrose Place? Yeah, there is. Is it really? Because I watch it every week. Well, I've never seen that. The stuff that's on that show. Well, I mean, there should be. How come everything happens in that one place around that pool? It's I know, what a exactly. coincidence. What All right, I want to ask you guys, though, um, you say that the line was crossed there, and you ask why the burning of the cross. It's pretty easy to say why a woman would reveal her breast to the crowd, because that's going to draw ratings. Take a look at Deborah McMichael, who kind of gives a little flash here, and, um, I mean, she's made a name for herself, as many of the WWF women have, being very attractive, very voluptuous, and, I don't know, you guys cool with that? I'm thinking probably not. Not cool with that at all. Okay, you know, it's like, what about the kids sitting there watching that? Is that great? That is so lame compared to Melrose Place or... No, some of it's so not. No, it's really bad. No, I, really I totally bad. disagree with you. Take a look at Melrose Place. They have two homosexuals kissing. They're not showing their breasts like that. And kids, kids are watching, are watching that. that. Kids don't have to watch that. You're bringing, you know what? Tell the kids, you know, there might be breasts in this. You might get, might see a burning cross. You know, you, you, you know, parents, you know, you're gonna have to explain this to your kids when you well, come. To according this. to the Canadian law, we have a disclaimer, so that just ends that topic right there. We have a disclaimer right at the beginning of the program. How about um, now? The Godfather, right, is a guy that you wrestle with from time to time. He is no, he's a pimp, right? That's his role. He, his role. he procures women for other men. Now, take a look at this. Um, now, he refers to those women as hoes, right? Excuse and, me? Well, that's, well, if you listen to the uh, audio on this, the Godfather here is awarding two women free of charge, I might add. For the whole night. You think this is good? You're actually, you actually like this, that that's going on? You think that's okay? I think it's hilarious. Greatest Why? form of entertainment. Don't you think in that's degrading world. towards women? Well, it depends. 
I mean, oh my God. well, but, yeah. but see, I, you know, like I'm sort so. of, I think there's two different sides here. And I think that the problem that we have, and I agree with, with Val here, is that there's a double standard here. You want the WWF to play by different rules than it Melrose like plays by. It's more time spent well, burning crosses, showing off good looking women, showing them. They can do anything they wrestling. want. You know, I mean, and, and, and if it's good I for other people, that. why isn't it good for them? Why can't Vince McMahon, who produces this, put on the same storylines as the soap and operas? Then sell it on the porn channel. Don't sell it but, on but it. But you're seeing it on all the other channels for, for other forms. They just want to say, Exactly. Consider us the same type of entertainment as Hollywood the, as Hollywood does. Definitely. But I totally is, agree with okay, that. then is, is wrestling a sport? Is that a sport then? Sports entertainment, and it's the single greatest form of entertainment in the world today. Not because NASCAR stock car racing. Yeah. <laughs> No. You know what? You know what's going on with this stuff is that in, in every form of entertainment, we've raised a bar of tolerance, and the bar of tolerance for what we're seeing here is obviously been raised past what uh, Beverly and po probably myself would possibly it's like to take our over. children to see. Yeah. But that would be our decision, and we as as adults would have to know that. And and if we want to take our kids to go see that then we go see it. But we have an understanding that that's going on. Well put, well put, and well put. I agree with everybody. You all made good points. We want to know what you think of the show, the bar of entertainment, what's acceptable. We debate that all the time on this show. Here's an email we received over the past little while. Michael, how can the NHL claim to be cracking down on dirty play when Eric Lindros only loses $1,000 for swinging lumber in a player's head? I'm a huge fan of Lindros, but what's $1,000 to him? A new CD player for his Ferrari. We were debating that yesterday. Let us know what you think. There's our website. There's our email. There's our Fax number. We'll get some inside scoop from Val in just a moment. Okay, got to go around. Uh, you're in Hamilton this evening. Still a handful of tickets available, right, yeah. for your concert. All proceeds going to? To the food bank. It stays right in Hamilton. All the money stays there. It's uh, a great event. Michael Burgess, Farmer's Daughter, Tom Jackson, and uh, guessing the spirit of Christmas. Val Rock Bottom at G GM Place in Vancouver, Vancouver on Sunday, right? Yep. It's uh, going to be a fantastic pay-per-view. And five. February the 8th? The largest WWF Raw in the history of the World Wrestling Federation, right here in Toronto in the Sky Dome. Live on TSN. Live on at TSN. 9, and the hour before that, a live one-hour show, or live to tape at least, our show from us here on Off the Record. And what's up with you, Kat? I'll be driving up the Don Valley Parkway. <laughs> 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 Next race is in Daytona in February. All right, I gotta, I gotta get some inside stuff. Uh, you guys are obviously huge wrestling fans, the two of you, so you're gonna enjoy this. Um, true or false, you and the uh, Godfather tag team called Supply and Demand. Are we breaking a story here? Is that gonna happen? That's been thrown around the air a little bit. As far as that being the official name, well, that has yet to be determined. True or false, some WCW guys, that's their big rivals. Uh, the giant Chris Jericho from uh, British Columbia, I believe, um, could be coming to WWF. They could be. I've heard rumors floating around, and I can't confirm those, you know, exactly, but I have heard rumors. True or false, in your corner in 1999, we may see Jenna Jameson. Totally false. Totally false? Totally false. Are you disappointed by that? Yeah, she's <laughs> used, abused, and kicked out the door. <laughs> well, that's what we're going to do, at least figuratively speaking. Uh, Kat, Beverly, really Val, hard. thanks You're so much so for bad. joining us off the record. <laughs> Woo! Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Michael Landsberg's clothing, courtesy Tom's Place in Kensington Market. Who are you guys talking to? <laughs>